I'm Chris Georges. I was born in Los Angeles, California. You know, it's never been easy for me. I had my first street fight at the age of five. I started training in Kempo Karate when I was 13 years old. This led to more street fights because I had bullies that wanted to test my skills. I love my parents. It wasn't easy for them. They both grew up poor and they struggled their whole life to raise a family. At 18, I achieved my first degree black belt in Kempo Karate. Also at 18, I started working in construction. I became a carpenter and at the age of 21, I started my own construction business. I believe in working hard and taking pride in your work. Later in life, I would learn, train, and compete in another system of Kempo Karate. I am currently ranked sixth degree black belt in the IKCA. I was married once for two years. Love my wife, good lady, raising her two kids, love the kids. Now here's a situation where my wife came from another country, came over from Mexico. She didn't speak much English. The kids spoke both English and Spanish. Great kids, smart kids. Those kids were like my own kids. I still miss them, I still love them. But things just, I couldn't deal with it no more. I did everything for those kids. Took them to school, paid for all their meals, taught them martial arts, helped them with their homework, played games with them. I loved the kids. I think I did more for her kids than she did. I loved her, but she was crazy, insecure, jealous, loca. I'd be accused of things I wasn't doing. If a woman asked me for directions to go down the next street and I gave her directions, all of a sudden I cheated. She saw her eyes. Something's going on. I, I'm cheating. I gave her directions. She asked for directions. This is a daily thing. That's too much to deal with. One moment she's loving, next moment you're being accused of something. That's just too much for someone to deal with on a daily basis. I talk to her. I take her aside time and time again. Knock this shit off. Because I will get out of this relationship. I will leave. I will not live this way. And I love you and I love the kids and you got a good thing. And realize you got a man that's taking care of your kids. And I love those boys. But you know what? They're not my kids. And I'm taking on that responsibility. And you don't appreciate that? And you don't appreciate I'm working my ass off and providing all these things for you and taking you out and treating you good and loving you and doing things with you and spending time with you and listening to you? But then when you, th you think something's going on and nothing's going on being accused and I'm cheating and I'm a bad guy and I'm doing this and I'm doing that, then you got other girlfriends influencing you, telling you that, oh, it's not this way in this country, and you know, the man's not in charge, and don't put up with that. Don't put up with what? We're happy. We got a good thing going. Now you're going to bring in problems? Put up with what? How many women wouldn't want to be treated that way? How many women wouldn't want to have a guy that stands by him, right or wrong, puts a life on the line for him, provides for him, loves him, cares for him, taking care of their two kids? And now you're going to lie to me? You're going to manipulate me? You're going to accuse me? You're going to bring other problems that don't even need to be in this relationship because maybe your girlfriends are unhappy and they don't have that relationship at their home because their guys are cheating, but I'm not cheating. I'm there for you every night. I'm home every night. Why do I need this? About a year after my divorce, I discovered beautiful Costa Rica. Beautiful beaches, waterfalls, and the rainforest people here are warm and friendly. They even gather together to watch the sunset. Man, I love this country. I also love the beautiful women of Costa Rica. Boy, do I love the women. Kind, considerate, there is a rare inner beauty that I find so attractive. Often, I will bring a friend with me to show him this beautiful country and the women. And on this trip, I brought my friend Marty. Gracias, señor. Esto es para ti. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So what's with all the bars? I thought we were going to the Marriott. Don't worry about it, Marty. This is better than the Marriott. Just the way it is here. Ay, ay, ay. 
Hola, mi amor. Ay, ay, ay. Hola, Patricia. Hola, Cris. ¿Cómo estás? Muy bien. ¿Y usted? Bien, gracias, mi amor. Mm. Oh. <laughs> Él es mi amigo, Marty. Hi, how are you? She speaks really good English. No, I don't speak Spanglish. No, you speak good English. No. Aquí, mi amor. Sí, suyas, suyas. Here's your room. I'm going to see you in the bar, right? Hey, everybody, my friend Marty. Hey, Hi. Marty. Alejandra, uno más traigo por todos. Estoy comprando. Un cubo libre por Marty, OK? Is he from LA, too? Yeah, he's from LA. Pura Vida! Pura Vida! Yeah. What's, what's going on? Well, in this country, they say Pura Vida. It's like saying everything's beautiful. Life is great. You're happy. They love life. Like saying good health. It means pure life. But it's a word they use as everything is well. Pura Vida! Pura Vida! Yeah, yeah. You're going to have a great time, Marty. You ever watch that uh, TV show, Cheers? Yes. This is the Cheers Bar of Costa Rica, the garden restaurant in San Jose. This is the place. People are great, women are hot, drinks are good. You're gonna have a great time tonight. Lista, mi amor? Yes. Darren? All right. Great. Take care. Thank we'll you. See you soon. Great seeing you. Hey, Marty, just relax, have a good time tonight. Wait, you're leaving, you're leaving me alone? Yeah, you're fine. You're in the Cheers Bar of Costa Rica. You got Darren here and everybody here. Have a good time tonight. Don't worry. I'll see you tomorrow, all right? Hasta luego, amigos. Right. Hasta luego. Por the vino. <laughs> Pura vida. Puta vida? <laughs> That's closer. You'll get it. You'll get it. After Veronica and I left Marty alone at the bar, I felt a little guilty. But hey, I'm in Costa Rica. So, Marty, what happened last night? Did you get late after I left? Nah. But I bet you did. Oh, man, did I? She was wild. I mean, unbelievable. These women really love sex around here. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable night. Eight ball, side pocket. Say, what are the plans today? Uh, we're going to go down to Capos. What's in Capos? What's not in Capos? Everything's in Capos. You're going to have the time of your life, my friend. We're going to have a great day. We arrived in Capos. Marty was curious about this spot like I do about prostitution. Um, I, think it, I think prostitution is a, a, a great thing because uh, uh, in the United States, uh, the women want you to take them out, wine them, dine them, do all this, this sort of stuff. And uh, uh, in Costa Rica, you, you go out, you have a great evening with the woman of your choice, and she is simply performing a service. You know, a lot of guys will say, oh, I never paid for sex in my life. Bullshit. Did you buy a Coke? You paid for it. Did you buy dinner? You paid for it. How about favors for the in-laws? How about a divorce? Oh, now you really paid for it. So here's something that is a mutual satisfaction for both parties, and it's understood. She is catering to your whims and the things that you want done. And it, when that time, when that's over, it's over. The next day is the next day. Uh, I think there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Uh, I think actually prostitution probably keeps down rape. My feelings on prostitution, um, everybody's an adult, and what happens between two adults is between them. It shouldn't be any business of anybody else's or the government. Uh, that's my feeling on prostitution. Bueno, para que suene mejor sería como compañía, dama de compañía, ya. Porque es, es peor que digas prostituta, ya mejor dama de compañía es mejor. ¿Te gusta eso? A veces, tú topas con buena gente, mala gente, es depende. El trabajo mío es sola, no hay nadie que no cuide a uno. Digamos, vos salís, te vas para un hotel y en el hotel nadie va a estar con vos, sabiendo lo que te va a poder pasar en el cuarto, nada. 
O sea, vos vas, salís, trabajas y es sola. El único que está con nosotros es Dios y nada más. ¿A veces tienes miedo? Sí, me da mucho miedo. Sí, porque eh, he visto eh, cosas en las que, digamos, tú sales a trabajar y pasa un accidente, llegan, te apuñalan o tal vez el mismo cliente te puede matar porque ya ha pasado. Entonces sí me da miedo, me da miedo también de que una enfermedad... No, no me gusta el trabajo que yo hago, la verdad. Me gustaría hacer otras cosas. ¿Y por qué sí. no? Porque estar con muchos hombres no es bonito. Es bonito tener solo una pareja, tener solo un hombre en la, en la vida de uno y no estar con muchos hombres. ¿Tienes suerte o no suerte? A veces sí, a veces no. Es muy variable. Viene una persona que te diga, oh, te trata bien como una princesa, todo bien, ¿ya? Pero a veces viene una persona que te diga, oh, Bla, 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 es así o no, y no te gusta, pero la mayoría de las veces es mejor así, con buenas personas. ¿sí? Las personas de Estados Unidos son muy buenas todas en general. Mi opinión acerca de ser chica de compañía es que a veces lo disfruto, hay veces no, ¿verdad? Porque uno eh, difer conoce diferentes tipos de personas, diferentes tipos de actitudes de los hombres, por lo general a mí, este, yo trato de llevarme bien con los hombres, ¿verdad? De tratar de agradar, de ser especial, pero no todo el tipo de diferentes, eh, o sea, todos son diferentes. Entonces, a veces es como difícil, porque eh, más que todo por la, la personalidad, el carácter y todo, pero yo trato de dar lo mejor de mí. I think the working girls love it. They get the opportunity to buy their cell phones, their makeup, their nails, cars. Uh, it, it helps them tremendously economically because uh, it's hard to find jobs for most of them down here. They start working at an early age, 17, 16 years old. So it gives them an opportunity that they normally wouldn't have if they didn't have that avenue. Because of poverty, a lot of women are in this situation here in this country and other countries far as that type of, uh, of a job. The oldest profession, as they say. That is the oldest profession and everybody's had a problem with it, everybody has an opinion on it. But if you can't feed yourself, or you got no one to help you, and you got no job skills, or you got no education, or your, po your poverty, what are you going to do? I mean, you have to feed yourself, you have to do something, and if they can find a better way of life, they're going to take it. But if that's not available for them, if that knowledge is not there, or they don't have those opportunities, they're going to do what they have to do to maybe feed their kids, or to survive, or help their family, or whatever the case may be. I, don't, I, I actually kind of respect it. And a lot of times it's more honest. I would rather have an upfront honesty of what's going on than someone lying to me and manipulating me and I find out three years later or three months later, oh boy, I was manipulated. Oh boy, I, why did I do all those things? Now I'm all messed up. Muchas veces, este, mucho de mi tiempo sí lo pienso. Me da miedo tal vez este, que los años vengan y no poder salir tal vez de... de de este tipo de vida, por eso mismo es que ahora estoy pensando en tener otra oportunidad y, y poder este, eh, trabajar en otra cosa, porque ciertamente sí, sí me da miedo, más que todo a veces por, por las enfermedades y, o, por, o por situaciones que uno pasa con los hombres, ¿verdad? Pero, pero yo pienso que sí, que muy pronto yo podré hacer otra cosa que no sea esto. Mis tres hijos son de diferente papá. Sí tengo un gringo que me ayuda, entonces no, no vengo a trabajar por, por un mes. Me quedo en la casa porque me dice no vaya, quédese en su casa con sus hijos. Entonces, vivo. él me ayuda. The, the chicas have, uh, have babies very early in life and a lot of them, and that's part of the culture. So because of that, and there is no welfare here, they need money. And it's a, it's a developing country, so... It's not unlike uh, many other countries around Latin America and even uh, in Asia and Thailand. It's a, it's a similar situation. There's probably a number of reasons why the women are in prostitution. Probably from individual to individual, it varies. But uh, in general, there'll be some that uh, have no English skills, have maybe a grade three education and have no other choice. And then there's others like university students who can make a few extra bucks on the side have a few drinks and enjoy life that way. Estas mujeres que trabajan en esto son muy sinceras, no te piden nada. 
Solo amor, ya. Tiempo y amor. Es un poquito difícil el trabajo de nosotros. ¿Por qué? Porque se arriesgan muchas cosas. Eh, está arriesgando a que te puedan de ahí matar o que te peguen una enfermedad. Eh, a veces es bonito porque tratas con personas muy, muy amables. Digamos, te llegan, te carician, te abrazan. Pero hay personas que más bien lo que les gusta es el, el fuerte. Eso te golpean o te jalan el pelo, son cosas que no, no van con nosotros mucho. La verdad, yo vivo sola y tengo que mantenerme. Y si no puedo trabajar en esto, no puedo trabajar en otras cosas porque no, es, no he estudiado lo suficiente. The working ladies I usually get for an hour, 30 minutes. The girls that are non-working girls, I try to spend more time at the malls and the uh, Avenida Central and bars and locations, try to spend more time with them. The working girls, they're all about business, so naturally there's a time limit and monetary limit on how much time we spend with them. Listen, people are people, okay? Whether you're a working girl or whether you're a waitress, you're still a woman, you're still a person. The first person to badmouth a working girl or a girl that dances or something of that nature is a woman that's probably doing the same thing but she's, she's just not showing it or she's out with a bunch of different guys but because she doesn't have that position of a job or because she hasn't had those hardships it's easy for her to point the finger and say that woman's wrong or that woman's bad or oh my god she's a slut. No she's not a slut, she's a human being. So I, I can love you whether you're a working girl or a waitress, it doesn't matter. Some of these women are either great actresses or they're actually climaxing. <laughs> uh, which, uh, let's face it, uh, if you're married for like 15, 20 years and you're rolling over with the same woman every night, uh, um, it gets to be kind of old hat, you know? Uh, and I don't care how much you ex experiment around with this, with your wife trying this, that, or whatever, uh, eventually you run out of things to do and it, it, it gets old. So you have a choice with prostitution as to what you want to do and whether you want to be with a blonde, a brunette, a redhead, you know, whatever. I haven't seen too many redheads down here though. But uh, that's my opinion on prostitution. I think there's nothing wrong with it. As long as it's clean, uh, there's nothing wrong with it. In Costa Rica, prostitution is 100% legal for girls 18 years and older. The working girls carry health cards and practice safe sex. It is illegal for the girls to have pimps so what money they make is theirs. Rates vary depending on where you go, usually between $40 to $100 an hour. You can negotiate any length of time from hourly all the way to weekly. It's between you and the girl. Prostitution is a successful business in Costa Rica, especially in the beach towns and tourist areas. And in my opinion, it's the way life should be. Having heard others, Marty felt more comfortable going out tonight. So, I took him to a strip club I know. After getting out of the United States and having new experiences, Marty's views are changing. I find American women these days to be a lot more cold uh, to themselves, uh, materialistic, not really caring like they were in the 50s and generations in the past of our parents. They're a lot more into themselves now than they used to be. She should be able to cook for him and nurture him. Be behind him for what he does. Don't expect a lot from him and praise him once in a while. Give him a little support and that'll go a long way. But unfortunately, we don't see that. What we see is this, I want, I want, I want. 
what can you do for me? Well, how about I'm putting a roof over your head, I'm feeding you, I'm clothing you, I'm going out there every day doing the best I can for you, that's not enough? You want more? And if I want a meal, there's something wrong with that? When I'm paying for the meal, I want you to cook a meal, that's something wrong with that? That ain't right. That's my opinion. Some American women do that, very few do. Pienso que son inteligentes porque no se enamoran. Ya. Si te enamoras, pierdes. Te das todo y no te dan nada. En cambio, quitan y quitan, perfecto. Cuando te separas, tienes todo. Tienes casa, tienes una buena economía. Entonces, pienso que son inteligentes. I've found lately the American women to be a lot more materialistic. Como deberíamos ser todas las mujeres, todas. ¿Quieres algo seguro? Tienes que ser materialista. Pensar primero antes de poner el corazón. Women in North America, to my feeling, have become very cold. Uh, when one opens a door for someone, a uh, woman in, in North America, you don't know if they're going to thank you or tell you, what are you doing? Uh, that's my general feeling on women in North America. Son muy bonitas las mujeres de los Estados Unidos. Son muy bonitas. Eh, Pienso, no sé, las veo como muy libres. Eh, pienso que allá el trabajo es muy duro. Entonces muchas veces son muy serias, eh, enojadas, parecen que, que uno no les agrada. Pero, no sé, también es por el ambiente, pienso yo, porque allá es como muy fuerte. Si, yo, si, no, si he notado que son muy celosas, si son muy celosas. Eh, ya no sé si, si, si en el ámbito ya con la pareja, me imagino que si ella se da cuenta que uno sale con el marido seguro lo viene y lo mata a uno, pero ya sí, no, no, no sabría, pero sí, sí, son muy lindas, preciosas son, como personas, son excelentes personas. Uh, American women, uh, it, it's maybe hard to explain, uh, for example, when I was married for a long, and I think this is true of everybody, when you're married for a long period of time, uh, you get sort of complacent, used to each other, take each other for granted. And uh, American women, they use, <laughs> they use uh, let's say, sex for their uh, uh, advantage. Oh, I got a headache. Or I'm mad at you because you didn't do the dishes, you didn't do that, so you're not getting any tonight, you know? Uh, well, down here, uh, Costa Rican women, uh, they're entirely different. Uh, you don't have to take them out and wine them and dine them and all this. It's nice, it's nice to do that, but you don't have to do all that with them. Uh, they take you for you, have a good time. Uh, at the end of the night, that's it, you're gone. Uh, if you want to take someone else out the next night that's different, you can. Uh, I know that sounds very bad, <laughs> but it's fun, you know, it's, it's, it's fun. American women. Uh, there are no American women here. And it's, uh, and because of that, for me personally, uh, I really enjoy uh, uh, the Ticos a lot better, or Costa Rica uh, women are called Ticas. And, uh, and that's been a nice, nice change as well uh, compared to the uh, United States. Also, it's just a lot more fun here. I asked this one girl out here in Costa Rica to go out for like a dinner a regular date type of thing. And I've dated regular girls here, or, you know, non-working girls or whatever. And I asked this one girl, she was adorable. And I was in the restaurant and I was eating and I said, man, you're just so cute. I go, I'd love to take you to dinner. And she turned me down. I never was rejected so nicely in my life. Oh no, I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry. You have a boyfriend, you have a husband? No, 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 I'm, 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 I'm so, so sorry. I'm just, I'm just not interested. I, I, I'm sorry, you're nice, I'm just, I'm, no, that's okay. You don't have to go out with me, that's okay, I, I just asked. Oh no, but I, 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 it was so nice of you and I just, I'm really sorry. I never been rejected so nicely, I almost wanted to thank her for the rejection. The chicas here in Costa Rica are just, they're not so spoiled, they have a better attitude, um, they, they don't have uh, sexual hang-ups the way American women seem to. Um, and, and you know you're going to pay for it anyway. You're going to pay for it in the States with, with dinner and, and champagne and, and chocolate. And, that's, uh, and you may not even have a, a, a happy ending. 
So here in Costa Rica, you're going to get that happy ending. You're going to pay for it anyway. You can pay. You can. You don't have to do dinner. Los ticos. No les gusta que la mujer salga de la casa. Sola en la casa. Um, algunos les gusta pegarle a la mujer. No son celosos. Son re celosos. Más que celosos. Y no sé. A veces como jefes se abusan. Pero es una suerte. No todos son iguales, pero he topado con mala suerte. Y no. Mi opinión sobre los ticos es que eh, por lo general casi todos son un poco más machistas, ¿me entiende? Porque ellos quieren que como tenerlo a uno como dominado y que uno siempre haga lo que ellos dicen, pero también son especiales porque no todos los hombres son iguales, todo, todos son diferentes, eh, pero hey, es cuestión de, de, de la personalidad, ¿me entiende? Tratar de llevarse bien y eh, este, la comprensión y la comunicación que uno tenga con ellos. Mi opinión acerca de los americanos es que, bueno, son excelentes personas, ¿verdad? Este, su cultura me encanta, ¿verdad? Me encanta conocer lo que ellos piensan, lo que ellos opinan sobre nosotros. Y sí, casi siempre ellos vienen aquí a buscar chicas para sexo. Eh, muchas veces también para hacer amistad y, y tener buenas relaciones para cuando ellos regresan, tratar de tener amistades, ¿verdad? Y, y sentirse más, más confortables con nosotras. Tal vez yo pienso que ellos vienen, digamos, para pasar sus vacaciones. Eh, vienen acá a Costa Rica para ver muchachas, que les gustan mucho las muchachas ticas. Eh, se relajan, buscan un tiempo y mantienen una relación con una muchacha. Sí, es, es bonito, o sea, se, son relaciones... No, no tanto en Costa Rica, sino a nivel de otros países. Y así uno tiene más posibilidad de conocer más gente. Entonces, de, yo pienso que ellos vienen más que todo a conocer personas y a hacer amistades. Más que todo, no... Bueno, muchos vienen por sexo o, o a vacaciones, pero sí, casi siempre se logra hacer una amistad en, en todo. Of course, Marty knows I love Costa Rica, but he was wondering what other people find so attractive about this country. The first reason I came is because I had nothing holding me back. And the reason it's Costa Rica, um, I was able to come down here and enjoy life here more than I could anywhere else. And since then, I've, uh, I've got a daughter here, a six-year-old daughter, who's keeping me here now and I'm, I'm enjoying Costa Rica on many different levels. Well, I'll tell you, there's a lot of things that keeps bringing me back to Costa Rica. I really love this country. One of the things here is the people. The people are just adorable. They're friendly, they're kind, they're considerate. The women are gorgeous. They're not stuck up, they don't have attitudes. They love life, they enjoy life. The men are friendly, they're welcoming. They realize that people from other cultures, people from other countries, whether you're from America or you're from uh, Canada or Germany, that you come here to spend money, that you come here to bring business, and they welcome that, and they show that, and they're very gracious. Me encanta ir a la playa, jugar voleibol, mmm, broncearme con hilos pequeños, me fascina, fascina, me encanta. Y tiempo para mí, a veces juego play, a veces salgo a correr, me gusta el taekwondo, eh, bailar me encanta, soy fanática, bueno como buena latina, fanática al baile, me encanta el reggaetón, la salsa, el merengue, todo, en fin. En Costa Rica, I love the weather, it's uh, refreshing, it, it, it rains in the afternoons and in the morning the sun comes up, 5.30 in the morning, uh, the birds, uh, the activity, the, just, just the whole atmosphere is just is invigorating when you get down here from the States. I came to Costa Rica because I heard it was a wonderful place to live and I want to retire here. So I came looking for property here. Uh, I found the country to be uh, different climates in different areas, uh, 
just totally beautiful. Uh, the people are nice here. The women are gorgeous. Bueno, mi, para ser favorito, a mí me encanta pasar el tiempo libre con mis hijos, este, ir a pasear, llevarlos a la playa, este, y para divertirme yo, a mí me fascina bailar, me encanta bailar, yo voy a la discoteca, disfruto con mis amigas, eh, me tomo algunas cervezas y, y hablar más que todo, esa es, esa es mi, mi, mi como te puedo decir, eh, mi favorita, ¿verdad?, de hacer. So you've got the beautiful country, you've got the beautiful people, you've got the great restaurants and the food. The food is so good and so fresh, they don't add preservatives. It's, it's just like almost they got a fish out of the ocean, cooked it and served it. Here you go. Can't get any fresher than that. I mean, unbelievable. The best meals I've had in my life, I'm 49 years old, has been in Costa Rica. Primero que nada, Costa Rica es mi país. Hey, como todo tico, como le diría. Como todo tico, fanático a su país, muy natural, la gente es muy amistosa, muy amable, humildes y el turismo es muy bueno. No es mi país, es bonito, es... yo lo amo a mi país, pero si, me, si, present... si tengo otras oportunidades de conocer otros países, Ahí sí puedo opinar, porque no conozco ningún otro país. My favorite thing to do in Costa Rica is to drive around, see the countryside. Uh, they have such a multitude of uh, vegetation and stuff here. They have coffee plants, uh, banana trees. They have huge waterfalls, uh, streams, rivers running down. It's just beautiful women, and it's, it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous country. Costa Rica is tropical. It's cool, it's wet, it's flora, it's fauna, it's uh, getting to see old friends, it's, uh, it's, it's wonderful, man. It's beautiful, man. Yeah. Nightlife is what you want it to be. Nightlife is incredible. If you want to go out and just dance, you can go to El Pueblo in San Jose, and you've got reggaeton, you've got Latino, you've got salsa, you've got rock. You've got a lot of different things that you can choose as far as music and far as dancing and far as partying. It's just unbelievable. Uh, there's different types of nightlife. You know, you can go to shows. They have that type of stuff here. They've got nightclubs. They've got strip clubs. They've got that side of it, too. Uh, it's available for you. You want women? You want working girls? That's all available for you, which is something I enjoy. Whatever you want to do, it's available for you here as far as a nightlife. So whether you're single and you come here and you want to enjoy it as a single person and just party and have a great time, oh, you'll party your, you'll party your tail off. You'll, you'll have the time of your life. You'll go back to L.A. or back to the States and tell everybody, you got to go to Costa Rica. you got to see this place. you got to go to Costa Rica. That's what you're going to hear. You no, know, make a plans. Book a flight. you got to go. That's what you're going to hear. Now, as couples, you'll hear the same thing, just a different version. They're going to go do all the fun stuff, the tours, the golfing, sports fishing, the surfing, the zip line, the ATV rides, anything you want to do, the museums, uh, volcanoes, all that stuff's available for you. So if you want to come up here as tourists and you're a couple, there's plenty to do. You're going to love it. You're going to love the country. You're going to love the food. You're going to relax. You're going to be all tranquilo and you're going to say, my God, when can we come back to Costa Rica? We all have different views on life, love, and relationships. So what's your view? Mm, Chris me parece que es una persona, aparte que es lindo, es muy lindo, me parece que es una persona sencilla. Eh, le gusta hacer amistad. Eh, él es una persona que entiende mucho, entiende mucho a tanto a las mujeres como a los hombres. Eh, él pienso, no sé, que, que tal vez en su momento necesita, no sé, más amor, eh, más amistad. Eh, 
No sé, para mí él es una excelente persona. Es una excelente persona. Listen, I've been in about three or four relationships where I was in love with a woman and I never cheated on her. I've been accused of it. Sometimes you think, why don't I go do it? Because I'm being accused of it. But I never cheated on them. I loved them. I protect them. I take care of them. I'm there for them. I want to be there for them. I can't wait to be home to see them. I enjoy them. I love them. Why do I want to lose what I got? Why do I want to ruin a good thing? Doesn't make sense. But if I'm not in a relationship, then I'm out and about and I'm, I'm gonna, I have needs. And I'm going to fulfill those needs. But if I'm in a relationship that I really care for this lady, or I love her, or I think I love her, I'm not going to blow this. Why would I want to blow this? I got a good thing going. I like going out with her. I'm proud of her. I want to protect her. I want to be with her. I want to spend time with her. I want to do things for her. I want to see her smile. I want to make her happy. That makes me happy. In my opinion, like the difference between love and prostitution is that when you, when you get married and you're in love with your wife or whatever, you have that feeling. And then you also have the sex, okay? Uh, basically, I have a philosophy. As, as when you're young, uh, 20 years old or so, when you meet a woman, it's like 98% physical attraction and 2% how you like them. As you get older in the 50s or so, then it becomes about 50% sex, 50% uh, uh, how you feel about them. As you get older, 70s, 80s or whatever, then it becomes more we're friend, the friendship. The sex is, you know, after you get a certain age, the sex has gone out the window. And you just have to have the emotional and the, the feelings in friendship. Uh, the problem is in America, men that are uh, leaving their wives or getting divorces and they're coming to places like Costa Rica and they're re-energizing themselves. They're going back in time. Okay, and to say, wow, I can have a 20 year old woman tonight, you know, this is fantastic, you know, and they go overboard. I have a friend that uh, just left, he was from Washington, and he was down here like 10 days, and he had like 15 women, and he's 71 years old. He's going back to get, to, you know, him and his wife had already figured they're going to get divorced, but he came to see if he wants to move to Costa Rica, and he wants to move to Costa Rica. So. A mí me encantaría, ¿verdad?, tener la oportunidad de tener otro trabajo. No es que no me guste este, compartir tiempo con otros hombres, ¿me entiende? Pero sí me encantaría desempeñarme en alguna profesión, saber que soy útil para la, para la humanidad, que puedo hacer algo para, para mi futuro. No exactamente estar siempre eh, con hombres eh, y pasando diferentes situaciones, pero ahora sí me está pues, presentando una oportunidad de poder de poder este, desempeñarme en otra cosa y la voy a tomar la oportunidad. Mis planes para el futuro es ya y ser ama de casa, con, estar con mis hijos, tener hijos primero, estar con mis hijos, tener un esposo que me quiera mucho y que yo pueda quererlo a él y que, que ya y tener todo en la vida, pero en mi casa. Tal vez no diferente, pero sí en otro lugar. Las Vegas, España, en fin, más oportunidades. No aquí, aquí te encierras y es muy poco lo que te dan. En cambio, hay que salir, viajar, un toquecito ya. ¿Do you still hold out hope in America that you might find that woman in America? Now that I've visited Costa Rica on seven visits, I don't think so. I really, I have to be honest with you, I really don't think so. I think I'm going to probably end up marrying a Tika. And love is represented here? Oh, yes. Love is represented in Costa Rica in all forms and fashions. Well, that's a, that's a, as far as finding love in Costa Rica, uh, that's an interesting question. Uh, to be honest with you, a lot of my gringo expat friends that live here uh, when they get in a one-on-one -on -one relationship consistently, they, bring, they, they end up with a lot of problems because in a third world country or developing country such as Costa Rica here, um, when you have a girlfriend, the whole family is your girlfriend. And it could be a real burden on an individual, especially when, they're not, when a gringo is not used to that kind of lifestyle. So um, for me personally, uh, I have many different girlfriends, and, and that's the way I like it. But that's just me. There's a lot of guys that uh, certainly just want a relationship. And, and from my standpoint, uh, it's tough on them. And I'm here to have a relaxed lifestyle, 
easygoing uh, uh, daily life, and that's what uh, that's what I enjoy a lot. Do I miss love? Uh, yes, yes. There's there's nothing to replace the intimate feeling that you have for somebody, and we dabble in getting that sometimes when we're sitting in a place and we're looking at a gorgeous woman and we make eye contact or something. You get that electricity, that intimacy, that feeling, that love. Uh, uh, love is based, uh, there's a lot of things that make up love, okay? Body motions, how you feel, how you touch somebody, how it makes you feel when they touch you. I can have someone, uh, say a prostitute, touch my arm and doesn't really phase me. If I was really interested in a woman and she touched my arm, I have a, a totally different feeling. Uh, yes, I miss love. Para mí, Chris es muy diferente a muchos. Porque, al menos, eh, Chris ha venido acá a Costa Rica para hacer amistad, para conocer personas. Cambio, viene gente de otros lados, digamos, eh, Estados Unidos, Rusia, Canadá, no sé, de donde sea. Vienen, lo primero que hacen es, digamos, ven una chica, eh, primero sexo, nunca amistad. Eh, segundo, hay personas que, que maltratan, Chris no, Chris es cariñoso. Eh, muchos eh, no, no, no cuentan contigo para muchas cosas. Cris, sí, digamos, Cris, por lo menos eh, llega, te saluda, hola mi amor, ¿cómo estás? Eh, eh, ¿cómo, ¿Cómo ha sido tu trabajo? Por lo menos Cris se preocupa por nosotras. En cambio, conozco otros que han venido de otros lados que no, o sea, les da igual si trabajó o no trabajó, si comiste o no comiste. O sea, es completamente muy diferente, Chris, a los otros. You know, life after divorce, what happens with life after divorce, who knows? Um, I'm enjoying it. I mean, I'm enjoying it. Uh, to be honest with you, I'd much rather be in a marriage. I'd much rather be in a good relationship, a committed relationship, someone I can come home to. There's nothing like coming home, wife gives you a hug and a kiss and the kids are running up. There's nothing like that. I miss that. Things change. After a fantastic dinner, a glass of wine, and the beautiful view at the Costa Verde Hotel, I decided to go into the town of Capos. I enjoy this little town. The people here are friendly and full of character. Of course, I'm going to have a drink or two. I may even get laid tonight. Who knows? In the bar, I ran into Maria and Vanessa. Wow, they look great. Looks like I'm going to have a busy night tonight. I hope Marty's doing the same. You know, I really love this little town. Hey, Marty. Hey. Wow. I had a great time last night. Thank you for bringing me here. I'm glad you're happy. Glad you're happy. Wait till I show you the rest of this country. Well, I'm back in LA. Actually, today I'm in Long Beach back in the concrete jungle. Now folks, normally this is where I'd run my credits, but I've got one more story for you and I think you're gonna enjoy this. When I came back from Costa Rica and I finished my film, naturally I showed family members and friends my film. I wanna get their opinions, do they like it, don't like it, what their thoughts are, and for the most part, everyone loved it. All right, there were a couple of women that went off on me a little bit, even called me a male chauvinist pig, but hey, I can't make everyone happy. 
Now, I got these neighbors, Jason and Tanya, and I really don't know them that well, but they're nice people and I like them. And they have a beautiful four-year-old daughter. I mean, Alice, and she's just so cute. And every time I see her, she always lights up and she's always waving and smiling. And Hi, Chris. And I'm like, hi, Alice, how are you? I'm fine, Chris, how are you? I'm fine, Alice. I mean, she just grabs your heart. I mean, she's just an angel, so well-behaved, so cute. And I told her folks that when I finished my film, I would show it to them. Now, part of me is thinking that they're thinking, yeah, right, Chris is some filmmaker. I mean, they know me as a martial artist and as a contractor. Now I'm a filmmaker. Also, I promised I would show it to them. So being a man of my word, I live up to my promises. I make an appointment, and one day I go over. So the three of us were watching the film, and I'm noticing that Jason and Tanya, I mean, they're just so into it. They're both glued to the TV. They're taking everything in I say, the girls say, the other guys say. They're just taking everything in. About halfway through the film, Jason kind of crosses his arms, looks at his wife, and he says, yeah, cook me some dinner. I'm thinking, all right, he wants to play a little macho. I'm here, the film's on. The rest of the way through the film, not a word is said. Now, the film ends, they both look at me and they say, oh, it was good, it was interesting. And I'm thinking, good, interesting? That's all you have to say? After all the comments and opinions I've heard? All right. So I thank him and I grab my DVD and I go home. Now four days pass and Jason's knocking on my door. And I'm thinking maybe it's an emergency or something because he's never knocked on my door. In fact, the only time I've been in their home was that day when the three of us sat down and watched the film. So I said, Jason, is there a problem? Is there an emergency? You know, everything's okay, right? He says, oh yeah, no problems. He says, Chris, uh, me and my wife, we're having a couple drinks, we're relaxing, and we thought you'd like to join us, just have a couple drinks and talk. And I'm like, okay, yeah, that's nice. I go, Jason, give me a couple minutes and I'll be over. So I go over. Well, let me show you what happened that day. Oh, hey, Chris, how you doing? Come on in. Hey, Jason, how you doing? All right, all right, how are you? Good, good to see you. All right. Hi, Tanya. Hi, Chris. Uh, what do you have, Chris? Uh, we have beer, wine, some mixed drinks. Hey, Jason, do you have rum? Yeah, we have Bacardi and Flor de Caña. Flor de Caña? I love that rum. That's the Costa Rican rum. I'll take that and Coke. Excellent. Tanya, he'll have a rum and Coke and with Flor de Caña, and I'll have another beer. Flor de Caña, Tanya. Thank you. Jesus, how many beers is he going to have today? Come here, have a seat. Oh, thanks, Jason. You know, that was really nice of you to invite me over. I appreciate that. Oh, uh, don't mention it, don't mention it. By the way, where's Alice today? Oh, Grandpa and Grandma took her over to the LAZ today. Oh, she's gonna love that. You know, your daughter, she's just so cute and just so well-behaved. Yeah, she's my little angel. Here you go, Chris. Thank you, Tanya. Thanks. You know, Chris, I can't believe you really made a film and you shot it all in Costa Rica. That must have cost you a lot of money. You know, Jason, you guys have no idea. I mean, basically, all my money, time, effort, I mean, basically everything I have went into this film. Yeah, I think a lot of people are going to have a very strong opinion about this film. Yeah, I agree, Chris. It was a wonderful film. Was this your first film? You know, Tanya, I've acted in other films, but this was actually my first film as a filmmaker. Well, you did a great job. Um, oh, will you excuse me for a minute? I've just got to go to the little girl's room. Sure. I'll be right back. Chris, these girls are hot. I mean, are all the girls in Costa Rica like that? Especially that, that blonde one, man. Did you do her? Jesus, Jason, calm down. I mean, you got a wife, you have a daughter, you got a family, for Christ's sakes. Yeah, well, we're having our problems. I'm, I'm thinking about leaving Tanya. Man, those girls were hot. I gotta get down to Costa Rica. Jason, I mean, think about what you're saying. It's different for me. I'm single. I, I'm not involved with anyone. You have a beautiful family. I'm, I'm saying these girls are hot. I mean, oh, uh, Tanya's coming back. I mean, I, I really like your film. Oh, uh, well, thank you, Jason. 
You know, Chris, I learnt a lot watching your film. It was really interesting to me to listen to the, what those women had to say. And Costa Rica looks so beautiful. I'd like to see it one day. You know, you guys should go there. I mean, there's a lot to do for couples. I mean, a lot of tours and a lot of clubs and different type of entertainment. And there's a lot of things you guys can do. You really would enjoy it. I think there's someone at the door. Oh, hey, Robert. Hey, can you help me with that car thing? Oh, yeah, um, give me a few minutes. Uh, I'll be right back. I'm gonna go uh, help Robert jumpstart his car, okay? Oh, hey, tell Robert to say hello. Sure, sure. You know, Chris, when I was 12, my father left my mother for another woman. He just left the house one day and never came back. After that experience, I said that I would never rely on a man to take care of me. That's why I have my own job and my own money. And I'm always worried that Jason's gonna leave me one day. You know, Tanya, um, I don't think that's gonna happen because I, mean, I think you guys are a great couple and you got a beautiful daughter. I think you guys would be okay. It may seem that way, but Jason and I have our problems. Jason's not an easy man to be married to. Well, I hope you guys work things out. I mean, I really do. Thanks, Chris. I better get going. Mm -hmm. But thanks for the drink. I really appreciate it. That was good to see you, Chris. Good to see you. Thank you. You're not leaving already, are you, Chris? Yeah, buddy, I'm going to get going. Uh, I got some paperwork to do, and I want to get my work out in today, so. But hey, thanks a lot for the drink and having me over. I really appreciate it. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah, thanks, buddy. Sure. What's that look for? He left awfully fast. I wanted to talk to him some more about his film. What did you say to him while I was gone? Nothing. We just talked about Costa Rica, that's all. Yeah, right. Tanya, I know you. What did you say? I know you said something. You're just trying to start a fight, Jason. He's a busy man. He's a contractor, he teaches martial arts, and he's a filmmaker. He's got things to do. It's Sunday. He needs to relax too, you know. What did you say to him? You know, I think he has the right idea. I should go like him to Costa Rica. I don't need this bullshit in my life. Oh yeah, that's what it's really about, isn't it, Jason? Huh? You want to spend time with those women in Costa Rica, don't you? Oh, I thought you'd say that. Yeah. <sighs> did you ever think, did you ever think that just, just, just maybe, just maybe, it's you I shouldn't be with? Huh? The hell with you. I'm gonna go out and get a drink. Now, two weeks later, Robert tells me he's seen Jason late at night throwing a bunch of clothes in the car, slamming the door, and burning rubber out of the complex. He thinks that Jason's moved out. And I'm thinking, oh, great. Now, about two days after that, I run into Tanya. So I said, Tanya, um, are you all right? Is Jason okay? Everything okay with you guys? She says, well, did you hear Jason moved out? I said, you know, Tanya, I heard that, and I'm really sorry for the news. But you know what? You can't blame me or my film for what's going on here. Obviously, you guys got some major problems if he's throwing his clothes in the car in the middle of the night and burning rubber out of here. She says, no, you're right. You know, we have our problems, and we don't blame you. And I'm like, Tanya, I'm really sorry. Again, I go, I hope you guys work things out. And I went about my business. Now, two months after that, Jason starts coming around the complex. He's taking his wife and his daughter out on the weekends and they're doing things together. And I'm in the garage one day and Jason walks in and he says, you know, Chris, uh, me and my wife are going to a marriage counselor. We're trying to work things out. And I'm thinking, oh, great. You know, those things usually do more damage than good. But then again, you know, maybe that's what he needs. Maybe this will be their answer. So I wish him well and he goes about his business and I go about mine. Now, one month after that, I move out. Now a whole year passes and I have not seen or heard from Jason or Tanya. And I'm going to a construction job of mine in PV Estates and I get there one morning and Jason's there doing some electrical repairs. So he comes up to me and he says, Chris, he says, you're not gonna believe it. And I'm thinking, oh great, what now? He says, Chris, me and my wife, we're back together. We're stronger and happier than we've ever been. He says, Chris, I am so happy, I just can't believe it. All I wanna do 
is go home to my family. I want to get my job done and run home and spend time with my family. And I'm thinking, Jason, congratulations. Great news, buddy. Great news. Tell Tanya hello. Tell Alice hello. That's great news. Now, folks, I don't want to break up relationships. This is just my story and my experiences. And I'm happy that they're back together, especially for Alice. She needs her folks. You know, the grass isn't always greener on the other side. And for me, well, what can I say? I'm back off to Costa Rica. <laughs>